That was the Travis and some flowers through my window. <laughs> this is uh, XFM 104.9 of a Saturday afternoon, just gone six minutes past one. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello hi. there, hi. Hi. Good to talk to you. Uh, Carl Pilkington is over there. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey. Keeps it real. <laughs> yeah. Respect, Carl. Oh. Rick, um, I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away. Yeah. Into the, uh, stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you oh, remember the yeah. game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me laugh? hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, no. no what that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually did that on live <laughs> okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Oh, I remember, and We yeah. used to get people, uh, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and, uh, jokes and stuff. And if I could make Ricky laugh, on air with those. He won a toffee. Then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually say people love your laugh, Rick. So I was, in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they, they want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of the Sun. So if, if, uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy, only 40p. Yeah. And, uh, it Are we sponsored by the sun? <laughs> we do white van, man. Exactly. <laughs> it immediately straight away this, because bear in mind, right. it is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic! Look at that. Oh, that is Michael Stipe. Oh dear, with sort of glass, like, looking like I don't know, some sort of Nazi officer. That's not libelous. <laughs> that's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stipe. Yeah. He's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Bucks. It's picture. not a good picture. I love. I think I love Ari. I mean, I love most. I think he's a lovely man. But that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's, he's got just, big glasses on <laughs> and yeah. stubble on his little body. He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's <laughs> no, looking right he's beyond like, everyone else. Can <laughs> you see that? Carl? I'll tell you who he looks like. He looks like Zig, I think, from Zig and Zag. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like well, he's a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, love it. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, 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 the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good picture that is. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it. Coming up soon, we've got <laughs> Sir David of Bowie, <laughs> Nicholas Cave, uh, <laughs> and Travis Flowers in the Window again. <laughs> Play a song. Oh. So, I, I left a sequence to go in. Yeah. <laughs> Popped out for a coffee. Yeah. I don't want to diss the funny little French lads. Sure. But, uh, you know. Try harder. Are they French? Yeah, oh god, yeah. Sorry. Eh? <laughs> Do you speak much French, Rick? I speak un peu. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can ask, where is the Tourist Information Bureau? And, um, uh, I like, I can express my preference in music tastes, and yeah. I can order an Orangina, and that's all I can do. I, I know, um, yeah, blonde. Pression, I think. That means, um, draft your French. <laughs> <laughs> to, to Emily Music Folk? Oh, that's <laughs> filthy. So what that means, Carl? No, go on. Really dirty. <laughs> really dirty. To Emily Music Folk. Yeah, you dirty. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you filthy little f uh, Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, do you know, do you, do you know much French, Carl? Um, have you got any fromage? <laughs> 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 That'd work. That's cheese fine. fish. <laughs> it's, it's cheese fish. <laughs> it's cheese. Would you not care which one you were given? You like both. I it's think, the, I think that's a whole know. different kettle of poisson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just think when you're in, in a country, you should have a, have a little go. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's a very little go. Yeah. You, you mean like football hooligans have a little go? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, try and have a, have a go at their, uh, yeah. their language. And well, what I do is I go in there and I point and talk a bit louder than usual in perfect English. <laughs> and if they don't get it, I go mental. <laughs> exactly. Securing the fact that I've tried my best and now I'm in a laugh. <laughs> and oh. that is, the, that is the, the prerogative of all Englishmen. Or just yeah. point. Point and shout. Yeah, yeah. point and shout. Don't yeah. forget, you, you know, because you can never be foreign if you're English anywhere. Yeah. No, yeah. they're speaking funny. Just remember that. Yeah? Yeah. God save <laughs> us. <laughs> Sorry, go on then. You were gonna say something else. Yeah. Um, that picture you're showing me. Yeah. Is that I wish we could post one on the website of Carl. Remember we won that, we won an award ages ago. Uh, what was it called? The British Radio Authority Award. Yeah. And, um, we made Carl get in the picture and he was a bit reticent. A bit, it, it came on us. But, his head, his perfectly circular. <laughs> I put a coin on it, and it, and only the ears popped out from behind the coin. Isn't it perfectly round, isn't it? I mean, it? W when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has, stop having a go. Yeah. And I saw this picture last week, I thought, God, he's right. Can we get, can we, ca can't we just pop it on the XOM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on and just Steve, get someone. Have you seen that, that man in a jar without a brain? <laughs> 
Sorry, you have, you have, is that something? Is that a product you can buy? <laughs> <laughs> in like Sainsbury's? Uh, is it a dream you had yesterday? No, and you wondered if you could. Can I? Uh, yes, hello. Um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? No, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> in uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you mean? In the future, you'd be able to download your dreams and then just like act them out again, probably in the year two thousand or something. Mm. Yeah. Soothsayer. No, there's some museum somewhere. Yeah, that's got this little fella who was born without a brain. And he's in a jar, and it's just that like he's got a really round head. Right. And when I saw this picture, I thought, God, it, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. <laughs> oh, and what do you mean he's born without a brain? He was born without a brain. So it's a baby. He's uh, not a little fella. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with like people in prams thinking that fella's little and he doesn't talk much? Yeah. You know babies aren't like little people. Well, maybe. Well, they are little people, but I mean they're not they're not very small adults. They're not like midgets. They don't do a job of work, is what we're <laughs> saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're very there. Yeah. What do you mean? I didn't read about it. I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going mind. wrong, Carl. This is always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little cat. But what do you mean? How do you, you guess at what you think the meaning? But is? how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but people say that about you. It doesn't mean you literally you haven't no, got no. a spinal. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and, and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Right, right? call in 0870-800-1234. Once again, uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Just in general, it's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. Vegas two times. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed. Um, a fetus or or a stillborn child, a pickled born, baby, a pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> oh no! But because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> what are you basing that on? You do carry on growing, yeah, yeah. Of course. yeah. Well, your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose, and your eyes don't grow, so uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if, if like, there was an experiment where <laughs> they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of a person? It was like they download, be? yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they and have? And it took everything literally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, there was no, there's no irony or, uh, yeah, it was just. They just, everything we said they assumed was fact. Everything and, and Carl said. And they any question, was fact. any question it had about the world, it could only ask Carl. Exactly. And it was. See, now, his... this worries me because without wishing to be disrespectful in any way, Carl, you know I think you're the best man on earth. When you have a child, we could be in a situation a bit like that. Do you know, is it a concern for you, do you think, that like when your son's growing up or your daughter and they're asking you questions, you're conscious, I mean you yourself have admitted that yeah, you, have a, you have a sphere of knowledge which you are an expert on. Ask your mother. You'd say ask your mother. <laughs> That's good. That's great, fair enough. That's good. And I'd play with it. I think I'd be a good dad. Yeah, cool. I think you would. But I wouldn't be the one who's shouting at it. No. No. I Who would you get to shout at? Yeah. Probably Windsor Davis. <laughs> He'd be good, wouldn't he? You horrible little man! Well, you know, I'd tell it the rights and wrong. You don't have to be a really bright person to know the rights and wrong in the world. Yeah. No. I think you are bright, Carl. You are. And at what point in their, um, in their life would you tell them about the evolution of the baguette? <laughs> which you told us. <laughs> or the story of the bee. Yes. That you sc <laughs> scored once. Or the two children. Would you ever get them to meet as <laughs> yeah. maybe like that? They could be godparents. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the friends you had at school. Yeah. With webbed the, hands. The, the, <laughs> big heads and webbed hands. That weren't friends. That weren't friends. I wish we could track them down. Oh, that'd be great. I imagine they're in a zoo. <laughs> 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 oh wow. Oh, yeah. two big That's jars. Part, yeah. Two big jars. Industrial strength jars. Oh dear. Man. Guess what? Go on. Um, this is one of our last shows. We're going away, I'm afraid, on the, um, 4th of May, isn't it? I can't remember. That's our last show, the 4th of May. Um, yeah, not forever. I, I brought a downer on the whole thing then, yeah. didn't I? There's people cheering. Well, guess who's taken over from us? And I found this out. I was watching Liquid News the other night. Right. No one had called me. Zoe Ball. Well, she's a good presenter, but is, is this confirmed? I don't know. Uh, should I have said that? Is this true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, you've done it now. <laughs> yeah. She was in the other day. You watched it on the telly, so. Yeah. Well, what annoys me is this is rather like when we got, according to last week's uh, Media Guardian, we got wrapped for uh, saying the word cock on the radio. And, um, oh. what well, we never did, did we? That was, we had to read that on the internet. We yeah. never told that, us. That. that just slipped out of your mouth, didn't it? What's that, cock? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. And, um, now we don't even get told face to face that Zoe Ball's gonna take over. Yeah, but it was only, like, sorted out the other day, and then I, when I saw you. We're we allowed to say Ball, aren't we? Yeah. When I saw right. you yesterday, I said, yeah, it's. So we're not allowed to say. Oh. No, no. 
I'm not gonna say the word, and we're not gonna say the, we're, we're not allowed to say the, we are allowed to say the male bird is a cock, we're not allowed to say the other yeah. one, but we are allowed to say ball. Yeah. What if her and her dad, Bobby, uh, would they be, would we be allowed to say a pair of balls? We'll be able to say that, and uh, I don't know. I don't I think he's part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need to. In fact, if, if she's listening, call in and confirm it. We'd let her on the air, won't we? As long as she doesn't swear. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah, don't be rude, Zoe. Lou. Yeah. <laughs> don't be better, cheap, basically. Better warn as well not to leave too much, no, nothing lying around. Cause it'll be gone. <laughs> Especially if it's Skag. Funny men. Killing Moon. Good to hear that again. Yes. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais. Who are you? <laughs> Steve Merchant. Who's that funny little round-headed fellow over Carl there? Carl Pilkington. The pilk. Pilky. Pilky. Pilkers. <laughs> well, she hasn't called, so mustn't be true. I just didn't think we were, um, being disrespectful to her because we both think she's a fine presenter and I think she'd do very well on there and I think it's a good move as well. Yeah, yeah. but can you just say it's not, not forever, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, I, think think I think she'll become more popular than us. And I, mean, I, think, I, think, I think, I think that'll be the end of us, to be honest. Well, I think she can though. string a sentence together. I think she'll get lots of PR and everything. And she goes out with Big Boy Slim. Big Boy Slim. Who's, uh, you know. A good DJ. He's a good DJ. And, uh. Is her name Zoe Slim now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there will be nothing. Yeah. Three months in it, she's taken over for. Is she getting paid the same as us? I don't know. We'll find it's, out. I bet it's a hell of a lot more. I'll go mental. <laughs> I bet it's good money. <laughs> it's good money. I'll, I'll, I'll go mental. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. What are you gonna do? I'm, uh... For three months. I, I, I'm gonna have Saturdays off. What is she- are, 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 are you gonna present with her? Are you gonna come on and press the buttons? He's not allowed. No, I don't- I hope not, cause He's you know, you're our- Yeah. Ripping boy, um, <laughs> present- <laughs> co-presenter. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like our little fella in a jar. Yeah. We're, it's like- That's what like we should do with you over the, uh, <laughs> three months. <laughs> Keep in a jar, and we can have it we, in alternate weeks. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like step-parents or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Brilliant, just you can- Oh, it, me and Steve are fighting for custody. Yeah, it'll be a big jar though, you can- mm. you can put stuff in there. You can- oh, you can have- it won't be- oh, it won't be like, um, full of water or, or vinegar or whatever they do. Or you won't become pickled pile. No, um, it'd be- it'd be like an air- big air chamber and you are sat- sat there and it'd be like a little- what would it be, an armchair or something? It'd be in an armchair and we'd- and we'd have stuff in there and we'd bring your girlfriend like once a week and she'd go and we'd put a blanket over the top so we wouldn't, you know, see anything. But like the Big Brother household. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's a hell of a documentary. Oh. That'd be amazing, wouldn't Carl it? Carl in a jar. But anyway, that's <laughs> what- so we're going away on the 4th of May for 12 weeks. It's a long time, isn't We were doing the second series of The Office so we can't be around, I'm afraid. And- and, uh, Zoe Ball's standing in for us. And, uh, That can't be right. She's not stupid. I don't think you can say standing in for us. Isn't that right? Taking over the show, I think, would be fair to say. I don't know. I, got, I can't say anything now, can you? I'm don't worried about that. Just because he goes up with Big Boy Slim, mm. you got to be careful what you say. Yeah. Uh, Can't you look upset? He's starting to think that we're getting melancholy now that you're just gonna sit at home. What are you gonna do every Saturday? Dunno. Go shopping. Let's sort out a jar. You've got to do the balloons before then as well. You've got to send you up in a balloon. Maybe you can send you up in a balloon and you come straight down into a big jar. Yeah. And they put a, like, <laughs> a giant cork in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a big jar. I'll tell you what we could do. We could set you adrift like Robinson Crusoe <laughs> set the ball and see where you if end you, up. If you find me, yeah. Oh, you might go to an uninhabited island or something. I'll tell you something that I learned in the week. Go on. Just reminded me there about going up in the air. Go on. Right. If cars could drive up, it only took an hour to get into space. Which is great. Going how fast? Uh, about fifty miles an hour. <laughs> you just made that up, didn't you? Guess. You just plucked. You just guessed that. You just guessed it. You just said about fifty. Yeah. See, but this is what worries me. If you have a if you have a son or a daughter, yeah, age fi fifty, yeah. he's going to be out in the street with a ramp pointing Dad, into the sky. Dad, how long do elephants live? About a thousand years. <laughs> a thousand or something. I want to say. Dad, how much can an ant lift? About a quarter of a quarter of a kilogram, probably. <laughs> uh, about two bags of sugar. If you guess, it's not fact. Yeah. If just because you thought it, that doesn't make it fact. Does anyone know how long it'd take a car going 50 Let's miles an hour? People are phoning in about anything space. now, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. asked them to phone in about the jar thing. <laughs> <laughs> Switchboard lit up. 
<laughs> it's crazy. You like, you like <laughs> people to about, like, you well, know, something sensible, yeah. like Che Guevara or, yeah. you know, the life of I Mr. Fisher. There's that, nothing. That is really a demographic sort of snapshot <laughs> of <laughs> our fans. And our audience. Ask them about a dead baby without a brain. Oh, yeah. And they're reaching the for their phones. They don't mind what their bill yeah. is that much. We ask them for, you know, I don't know, great quotes or it, something yeah. from the great philosophers. Nothing. They're just we asking them the where phone. to buy, yeah, meths. <laughs> Straight on the phone. Oh, do you know the, the quotes that Ricky gave me last week and I turned them down? Yeah. I got home, girlfriend had a go at me. They don't know you turned him down. What you know is that he said he didn't uh, want to take the book at the end of the show, he said, I'm not taking it, it's too difficult. I'm gonna go and get a nice one and go on, come Yeah, on. so I went home and, uh, Suzanne said, where's the book? She was really looking forward to having a look at it. I said, oh, I gave it him back, I wasn't up for that. And yet, last week I was ill and stuff, I wasn't in the mood for learning. Yeah. So I'm not having it. She goes, this is where you went wrong at school. Oh. She said, this is exactly where you went, went wrong. She said, you know, you liked infants. You liked, uh, you know, you're colouring in and you're painting stuff. She said, but as soon as it gets to the heavy stuff, you just, you know, you're like a horse with its blinkers on. Yeah. So you just shut yourself away. So I said, no, I, I just, I could have done if I wanted to. So anyway, um, we went and bought a quotations book, so I have got some quotes. Yeah, what's the quotation book you bought? So I was asking him to, uh, read Keats and Wilde Wordsworth Shakespeare. Uh, what did you buy? It's, it's quotes with, like, Eric and Ernie and that, innit? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's still quotes. <laughs> They're still quotes. <laughs> the yes. Sesame Street book of quotes. <laughs> Brilliant. That's no, that's still valid. No, it's a starting point. Oh. It's a starting point. Okay. Well, we'll have well, some quotes we'll have from some that after. We've got, we've got a yeah. lot more to get through before. Oh, we've, we've got a bit of new point. order. A bit of new order. Excellent. <laughs> um, on XFM 104.9, someone, I, I love our listeners. I really do, right? Uh, someone just called in and said, it's about putting, he went, hello? Carl answers the phones. And I said, hello? He went, hello. He said, yeah, about putting Carl in a big jar. And Carl went, Go on. Uh, <laughs> and the bloke went, well then you could call him Carl Pickleton. And he went, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bothering. I like Carl Pickleton. That's yeah, lovely. That's, that's so sweet. He spent 50p to tell you that and you were worried. You just saw you going up in a balloon and a landing in a jar again, didn't you? <laughs> what have you gone through yet? You've had nothing but good feedback from this show now and now you're just getting all worried, aren't you? Heat magazine say you're a genius. You've got your picture in that extracts magazine with a little round head. You have Jaffa cakes. I gave him a five the other week to buy biscuits. He's having the time of his life. Yeah. This is best day. This must be your best two hours of the week. I enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> it's alright sometimes. Yeah? <laughs> what's what's better regular than this for you? What's a better two hours a week? Uh sleep doesn't count. Um actually you're probably right, it might be this. Yeah? Yeah. Or um that twenty four thing's good. Right. Like I'm probably worth sorry. mentioning Susan. Yeah, your girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Yeah, well that goes without saying, doesn't oh, it? Oh, he's done I mean? it. He's oh. pulled it round. <laughs> he's pulled it round. He's a charmer. If you could come in and sit in the corner, then yeah, it would be the best time ever. That's pretty sweet, actually. Oh. And she's not even in London at the moment. Oh, so you want to say that? Yeah. You have to say it, and you did anyway. Yeah. That's she lovely. Might, she might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Sky Digital, isn't it? There's always that. There's always, always that <laughs> danger. <laughs> anyway, Steve, over well, to I, you. Um, I just was wondering, because I, obviously I, I've had an exciting week, relatively speaking, Rick, because yeah. uh, instead of just spending it all with you, yeah. sat in a little room, yeah. um, <laughs> as is our way, yeah. I've been doing some acting this week, as you I know. know. I know. And I don't normally act, uh, but I, um, basically uh, there's some people at the BBC who are making a, uh, comedy pilot, kind of comedy TV show, and, uh, you know, and I auditioned for it, and the role was, uh, to play a sort of freaky looking, sort of lanky geek, you know, and I don't want to say- How did you beat off I don't want to say an arrogant Rick, but uh, they gave me the job on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was like, you know, I mean, obviously I'm, you know, cause I'm not a bad actor, I'm not as good as Rick, but I'm, you know, I'm, what, I'm, is I'm, what is it? What is it? It's a, uh, it's a, uh, I play a really tall guy, like a sort of. That's six the part. Foot seven. That's the part, though, isn't it? About you've got a. Beard. I'm a character who's um, six foot seven inches tall, and I'm trying to win the world's uh, tallest man. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's always a man that beats me every year because he's slightly taller. But this year, I think for some reason, because I've been training, I can beat him. That's the and, um, Sally Phillips, I don't know if you know Sally Phillips, she, she's a very good, uh, comedy writer and actress and she's written it. So it was good fun and so we went down there and it was good and everything. It was, you know, a little trailer and everything. It was like the proper deal. It was really good. And, um, the problem was yesterday I had to dance. One of the sequences had me dancing. Now, as you know, I think I'm a pretty groovy dancer. I'm yeah. pretty, I'm a bit of a mover. Yeah. And I have to tell you this, Rick. Do you have anyone's eye out with your elbow? <laughs> I have come to some serious realizations about my dancing. Really? I was moving around like a shire horse dancing. Really? It was terrible. I was just like quick and they, they say this choreographer trying to show me some moves and it was just it was, it was just like crying by the end yeah, of it. It was they, they really were, they were, <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. But the worst thing about it is today 
my whole body is ravaged with pain and agony. It's, I'm utterly devastated by the, the agony of it. Trying to get down the stairs this morning, I swear to God, I look like Thora Heard. <laughs> Trying to hobble that, it was mad. I was like I'd had several hip replacements. I was like, I had to go down an angle, going down the stairs, it was ludicrous. And I was really worried, suddenly I'm thinking, because I thought I was pretty fit and pretty yeah. groovy and everything. Mm. And I had been discussing with, um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe just start doing some exercise, because mm. I'm putting on a little bit of weight, right, he's quite a thin, tall guy, he has a belly, I don't know how to summarise it. Have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. It looks like that. Really? It's like a grotesque. So the two of us were up, so we suggested, we decided that we were gonna do some exercise together, right? This is what we're gonna do. We, each morning we were gonna get up, we were gonna exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because a couple of days ago I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos. You know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or a yeah. sort of hour long workout. And I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Oh. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, w you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right? Nine o'clock in the morning, working out- You didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brother's <laughs> video, right? That was- it was the cheapest one, Steve, you told me. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. Working out, right? And the two of us in our shorts, she's there, like, the, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right, shouting out and stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um... There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No, I mean, I th the ones you'd avoid would be to uh, Liza Minnelli, right, Cher. Um, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, Del Winton. Gay Byrne. Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, So, I think, I, I think, Helen from Big Brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um, but I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer. I'm obviously not in that kind of state, this kind of state at the moment. I don't have that kind of cash. No. But, um, you know, I'm obviously quite excited. What have I got to look forward to? Do, do I go through a my, my, carry? my, uh, my trainer, Pink Eric, we call him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, well, uh, I, um, I sort of box a little bit. But what I'm saying is, do you go through a pain barrier? What, no, 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 I stop way before that. <laughs> right. And I okay. sit down and have a beer. Right. You don't, there's no, there's no point in going <laughs> through pain because it just put you off. Sure. So, um, if, if, if you, you know, start feeling any sort of pain or, or any, um, breathlessness or any aches, <laughs> yeah. sit down immediately. <laughs> now, is it right that he's worked out a special routine for you where you don't have to get up? Yeah, well, he actually said, I remember the first, was, uh, I got my food diary and he was looking at it and I could see he was, he, he sort of feared it. He feared taking on this challenge. And this is a true quote. At one point, uh, he, he said, right, um, okay, cut cheese down to five times a week then. I must have haggled from four. <laughs> cheese down to five times a week. <laughs> and it, it's sort of like, I'm my own worst enemy. Because if I cut out cheese and beer, I would just lose weight. Like, it would drop off me in a month. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just, I'm fighting it all the time. I'm, yeah. I haven't changed my sort of eating and drinking habits, but I now work out three times a week. And it's an uphill struggle, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just so you're just keeping it an even keel. I know, well, I, I, yeah. So I can live longer to eat more cheese and beer. Do you exercise, Carl? Do you do any exercise whatsoever? I, I used to go to a gym in town, but it wasn't the sort of, the hard work of doing the, you know, the stuff. It was just like, it was like 60 quid a month. Yeah. I thought, well... Crazy, yeah, isn't it? That's not good. So I just got out of my way to sort of walk everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of jumping on a bus, like a nice day like today, walking to work. Or, uh, you know, run up the stairs. You're <laughs> skinny, though. <laughs> you run up the stairs. What? You're really skinny, though. No, but I, I do eat a lot of, like, crappy food, so yeah. I reckon, I mean, what did they say? When you get to 30, it all just... You go mental, don't you? Yeah, you know they say I mean? that, play records. That's, is, who's the, that's the philosophers, no, isn't no, it? Just... When you get to 30, you go mental. No, oh, Descartes. Yeah, <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. No. Play records. Better Bowie? Oh, yeah, oh, I brought this in. You'll love this, Steve. Oh, you know this, I think, I'm sure. This is uh, uh, a great Bowie track off Aladdin Say, one of my favourite albums. And this is Lady Grinning Soul. I'm Carl. Yeah, exactly. You've not, you've not lost interest, have you, Rick? Uh, no, of course I haven't. Okay. <laughs> God. It's silly to, uh, I've said it once, so I, I, get, I was a bit bored with just saying your names. Okay. I don't mind saying mine, because I'm sort of interested in that. <laughs> yeah, sure. But the other ones are sort of more of a chore. Do you okay. know what I mean? There's okay. nothing in it for me. Yes, <laughs> there's no actual I'd game. rather not mention either of you. Okay. So, if you want to do it, from yeah. now on. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, listen, um, obviously still got plenty to come. We've obviously got uh, some great music, Rick, and that's uh, well, I've got, um, a bit of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Um, actually, an album you introduced me to, and I'm gonna play, um, 
Into My Arms. Looking forward to it. And you know how beautiful that song is. That's true enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was just, obviously I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and, uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was, um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they know, and, you know, all good, good lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything, but there's this one guy I was stood next to, and, you know, he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good looking bloke or whatever, and, uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring because there's a lot of just hanging around and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights, I just stood next to him and he just went, oh, he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album? <laughs> And I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. He went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is no longer with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine. One of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, oh, okay, great. Without went, yeah. irony, I Absolutely assume. without irony. He was just wanting to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses. But I tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in sort of an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency. Uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I was say, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true enough. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into them with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album, um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to uh, those live gigs before. And, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, I was down there. And I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, oh, no, he goes, oh, it's crazy down there. It's wild. A guy threw a punch at me. I punched him, knocked him straight out. He knocked me out. Someone's this fight went off. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing, amazing. I went, are you going to go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's, why, yeah, that's why I attacked him. <laughs> it's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they Slash always... himself again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. Exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the venue, so I'm going, okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever going to go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Do you know what I mean? And I uh, almost uh, did what well you that's did. Well, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No point I then. thought it was a joke. I thought he was making a joke, and I was about to laugh, and I realised he was deadly serious, and I went, you be I went, 40. oh, good were they? He went, absolutely blinding. Um, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently for they two did. hours. And then he Excellent. began to tell me which, which of his favourite, he went, I, I don't know if, I said, have they done anything recently? Have they brought anything out? He went, I don't think they're going to be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, and yeah. Right in the Kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, Okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, it must have been like 1979 or something, and, uh, I'm a third of left school, and, uh, um, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster, and he was playing one in ten. <laughs> right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office, <laughs> yeah. everyone ignored him, and when it finished playing he turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he took, wow. it took a number and queued. The days when they were a protest. Mate. When was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I? I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in 08700 800 1234. I know it had just come out. But um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best live experience you've ever seen. I th it was one of those moments where you thought I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. You do you know what I mean? I don't know why that. I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is UB40? <laughs> Red Red <laughs> Wine, 40. maybe. You be you be you be forty, yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great God bunch of blokes, him. though. You see them, they, they, they crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But, um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, Maybe some great tracks that you could, yeah. uh, if you're a big fan. Well, I'm never going to go and see him because, wh <laughs> why, no, no, why sort of like top your experiences? Exactly. You no. Know? Because you know you're going to better it. When, when I know I'm definitely dying, yeah. I'm going to go. You'll summon them get to me play for you. Get me here with them. Do, get me labour of love live. Do, do right in the kitchen. <laughs> now. Lovely, that one. Brilliant, isn't it? The acoustic version of Just Like Heaven from, yeah. uh, The Cure's, uh, like double it. CD. I'm great. loving it, loving it, loving it. Collection. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting, and having a, having a cup of tea, and it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes, was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that, He's probably the only person in Britain, 
where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, and he'd go, gee, I can't- Yeah. Oh, God. Kurt so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> I mean, he was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, and, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the radio, but I told him this story, um, it was a, it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just there'd been a car crash, you see this horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at He goes, oh no, Dave, Dave. And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror and then it sort of went black and you realised that he was just a head and it had been his body. Oh wow. Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remaking that film, but it's two chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> Their own fault for driving. <laughs> <laughs> it would work, no. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, oh, no, five minutes, he went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and something like when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's he's, he's he's annoyed. Yeah, like I you. Have it. I want to see it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, but they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, tales of the unexpected one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on. Um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he says, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's, a, there's been a, yeah. a dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are. Get on the, get in the first coffin on the right. And then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape, yeah. right? So she goes, yeah, alright then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but That's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl, it right, really matters. Okay. Listen, I, I don't right. know if I'm gonna ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alone. Be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, she, right. she, she does it, she gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, Go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere so she's thinking this is it, I'm getting out. And uh, yeah, she's lying there for ages and thinking why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd it help escape. Oh, how bad is that? That is. <laughs> how bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive, then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive and yeah. can't get out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having yeah. told that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? That that's a good one. And um, let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was under yeah. the ground, wiggling we're, his finger. We're talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a, this is a motif I noticed in the, your particular <laughs> favourite ones. <laughs> yeah. Right? People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. right, so she's, she... It's uh, a fella, see, it? Yeah, it's, yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. I'm no, thinking. he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto wheel just knocks his finger off. You see, I'm wondering whether it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't there? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running out of ideas by the last year. <laughs> it's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, the this, is, now, this is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, 
um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like it might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they go and they say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died, and he owes, uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff, and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing. They just didn't want to say, just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes around there, and he goes around, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did, he goes, he couldn't have. He's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. I can't nodded like yeah. you caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Ooh. do 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 ah. do. Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just... Noises, occasional it? groans. Yeah, right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. I hadn't yeah. thought of that. Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. Yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, but she's great as only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a good looking lady. <laughs> well, it's time. Well, go on. That time, isn't it? Yeah. Play go the on. jingle. Yeah. Why Van Man, Carl? <laughs> Brilliant. Recorded at great expense, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where we just uh, hijack an idea from The Sun, which is, um, White Van Man, where The Sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh, no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different, because The Sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the, yeah, <laughs> the upper hand. hand. Yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, you're just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sissons Not asked and just probing questions? Uh, no, I thought it was- wore a burgundy tie. I thought, I guess it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See, that, that's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, a, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like funeral cards and that, and and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think you know when you send well, what, a card. What would you What would you suggest? Well, you know, um, whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair. What What? How would you like it? Up the just, just little little things in the card. I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy, so oh, that'd be good. So when, so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card, and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe like if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah, or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why? Have, why has everyone got to be so sad about someone dying? No, you know what annoys I mean? me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was hundred and two, and um, what you know, I mean, it's sort of like I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the uh, the funeral. Uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday, and there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. 
Well, she's just she tired and bored. It's so cry. transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just why are we crying when their nan dies? Exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tully Tubbies? No. The Queen Mum. <laughs> oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. Oh yeah. dear. I mean, I, I know. I'm sure you know. I don't know much about her. I don't know. If she was a great woman, and obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies. But it's like it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing from hours upon hours to see her yeah. lying in state because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that you know the Queen Mum's like, oh, I mean, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl. Um, I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the? Uh, <laughs> what do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about you, this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Uh, Let me see what it says here. It what says, is it? Uh, just choosing, uh, choosing the you know. Eye colour. Well, this or, is the, or this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? <laughs> I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like would, in the future if they're being you know genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But um. <laughs> I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right? You might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no. Well, listen, right? Because I remember when when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is going to be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why it, was she? It was a very. So, like, a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make it look gif. nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and. A kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did he get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Mustard on. Is <laughs> it? No. What, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> right. And, um, oh, that's great. I did Big, been big out. Jake come <laughs> looking for it. I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, so sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it, alright then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catelyn rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just, and how long did he have it for? Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I mean. Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so nice to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. to the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! This, uh, what? And when I, when I was doing it, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius. <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Because the story's going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track. It's deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. When I come from the West Country, I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. 
<laughs> right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse. We're going to Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, does she what a picture! Like? It is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a I no disrespect to her. <laughs> bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be poorly. Did you have any tats? Did you have any tats? I never got that close to it. Okay, all right. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a- th I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they- they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, no, what there. happened was I was um- they did this thing at school about raising money for charity. Right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good charity, money making yeah. over so, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups and, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about twenty five plants on it, selling yeah. them for twenty five pence each. Excellent. Did sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did they? W did you just cut? You didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil. Yeah, they wouldn't have survived. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, oh, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit rough. So as I went, the horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they've, been feeding, they've been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door and they opened the door and it was one of them houses where. No carpet. <laughs> yeah, a horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that! <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming off 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. Walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know Daddy, I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that the first start? Yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- well, That's by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family, who's a bit- what we were talking about, it was about cloning- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in their, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh god, no. was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, 
the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. A light. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh God. Ooh. But am I right? Oh, uh, you're always right, Carl. Finally, white van man. What do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> 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 is, is that, that true? a concern for you? <laughs> is that true? Apparently so. Why? Don't it's know. like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting for <laughs> 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 That should be <laughs> His comment on Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins <laughs> is no <laughs> is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> Oh, right. Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. Carl, revisited. Mm -hmm. Still got Nick Cave to come, haven't we? Absolutely. Uh, now, Carl, you read a, a quote book. What did you learn from it? What, what, to, to some pearls of wisdom. Just get, keep it down to one or two, your favourite things and why you like them. Right, well, you said, like you said, you said just pick a couple. Yeah. Right? So I wrote a couple down yeah. last night. And what, what I did, so they, so they weren't boring, right? I've sort of- I don't think uh, you can ever be boring, no, but No, 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 but what I've done, I've, I've took like different ones, so I've took a, a good one, that I think, yeah, that, that's a good quote, that was worth putting in a book. I put one that isn't really a quote, so I don't understand it. Oh, but yeah. One that isn't clever. <laughs> and, um, and a funny one. So a bit of variation all out, of, out of one book. Oh, how long did this take you? What did you do? Did you sort of like sit? About half an hour last night. And did you sit sort of like quietly at a desk or something? Well, no, uh, nah, just in the lounge with the telly turned down. Oh, right. Just to give a bit of light to the room. Just sure. had it on but turned down. Have you figured out lights yet? So, uh, <laughs> so the first one, never heard of him, uh, this guy called Dean Axon. Right. And this is a good one. He said, the memo is written not to inform the reader, but to protect the writer. That's good, yeah. yeah. Stuff, that's very good. That's yeah, it, that's... Yeah. Very, relates a lot to, you know, office life and so on. Yeah, modern world and that. Mm -hmm. Right, so then, thought, yeah, right, so I wrote that down because I liked it, and that's yeah. what you said to do. Second one, isn't really a quote, it's more of a, a poem. Okay. So how does that work? Well, yeah. that's okay. Just read it, just read it. Right, well, I want, it's about suicide. Okay. Right. Razors pain ya, rivers are damp, acids stain ya, drugs cause cramp. Gun guns aren't lawful, nooses give, Gas smells awful, so you might as well live. Lovely. That, is that that's from uh, Dorothy Parker? Uh, I tell you it what. Is, yeah. It. I hate it. I hate that. Why? I just it's, no, it's nothing to me that. I think and that. What what is yeah, yeah, yeah. a weak right. shallow All piece right. of well, this mock is, comedy? This is, this is why I did it in that order because that's what I thought. It's sort of like it's sort of like a it's like a zany vicar would write from living in Froome when All he's right. about fifty five and get it published in the. It, I hate it. All right, so you're saying you're not a fan of Dorothy Parker's work, right? right. Now the next one, Oscar Wilde. Yeah. Right, he's known, isn't he? Yes. Look, look what he comes up with. <laughs> All art is quite useless. Well, that's what, what's up with that? Well, it isn't. I did art. No, I know, but it's. Go on next. But how did how has art helped you? How has it been useful to you? It was a bit of a. It's it's one of the only things I like doing at school. Right. Do you know what I mean? When I made that little clay man, getting it fixing a car. Yeah. yeah. You made a clay man fixing a car. I forgot about that. How how can he? I, I think that's stupid. And especially that it's gone in a book. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It's easy to to diss things. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's hard to you're right. Exactly right. Um, I, don't, I don't think art is useless, by the way. But then you don't have to agree or disagree with some of these things. Some of them are, you know, so that someone, some, sometimes it's just their thoughts put eloquently or poetically, isn't it? And it's just, you just know. Just to provoke a reaction as much yeah, as anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, well. And the good one, Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, the <laughs> irony, sorry, but just go back there. The irony is that that is art. That he, he, he was an artist, wasn't he? So. But you, you don't, okay, so you don't like Oscar Wilde, but you <laughs> prefer Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> yeah, go on. Ozzy Osbourne, crack him on this. Funny and educational. <laughs> I bit her head off a bat the other night. It was like eating a crunchy wrapped in a chamois leather. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. boy, you're right. You're right, girl. Yeah. yeah. So, there's- What do you like about that? The way he's described what it is like- I think, yeah, if someone- I mean, that- you can imagine what it's like. 
Because I like crunches. Yeah. And, it's like and, a cement, yeah. and a chamois leather's really chewy, so you, you can imagine that's like the skin. So you like and his descri you like his descriptive yeah, writing. The crunchy bit is like the bones and that. Yeah. So perfect. But you know, Carl, it's interesting because you've analysed Aussie there, and in a way, that is the first step on maybe doing a new English GCSE. Yeah, you know, you've being just able to said, study said language you like it. And you said because it describes what about what you've never eaten about yourself. Yeah, but my teacher, Mrs. Kane, if I were to come into school with, uh, you know, a quote by Aussie Osborne, she wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> really? Do you know what I mean? And that's the difference. She'd go life. right, Carl, get your horse and go home. <laughs> well, listen, though, we were talking about other quotes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Do you know his one? Yeah. What one? Giant leap for mankind. Do you know it wasn't meant to be that? You know it's, it says, um, it's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, right? Yep. It was meant to be, this is one small step for a man. Right. I yes. me, the individual, uh, on a microcosmic level, one giant leap for mankind. And he mucked it up. Because if you say, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, it, man there means man. I know, I know, I know, it's embarrassing. So he, so he, oh, see, so he shouldn't give people, he's not a trained actor. <laughs> That's true He's enough. more of an astronaut, to be Has honest. Has he won any awards, uh, No, there are no awards. Has he have to nominate? Don't think so. <laughs> well, listen, right, he said another quote as he, um, as he got back into the rocket. Have you heard about it? Go on. We're running out of time, and I'm just wondering why it's worth saving as a bit of a teaser for next week. <laughs> <laughs> what did Neil Armstrong say as he got back into the rocket? Yeah. Is it going to be away? something like, uh, that was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> the mic's not still on, is it? Yeah. They're not still listening. Well, that's what I was saying to you. He could have said that, and it would have still not, gone down. Geez. It would have still <laughs> gone down as an amazing <laughs> quote, wouldn't it? Well, listen, that's I think you should save it, Carl. You tosser, I was meant to go no, first. No, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what we'll do, Carl. We'll squeeze it in before the end of the show, cause Ricky, you gotta play your song for the lovers. Oh, yes. We should play this. Oh, I don't think we'll fit in, we might have to save it. Don't worry, we'll see what we can do. Well, next play, week, uh, by the way, you've got Happiness Quotations, a collection of thoughtful words and beautiful paintings. I'll just give you an example of one. Happiness is a perfume you can pour on others without- you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. It's lovely that, isn't it? Brilliant. You can't be happy with that. Okay, but this well, is Nick quick. Cave and the Bad Seed, uh, from the Boatman's Call. It's a beautiful song. Any song that starts off, I don't believe in the interventionist God, is alright by me. Mm. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. We have indeed. So no, no time for, um, Carl's quote. That'll have to come next week. Yeah, we'll save that for Neil next time. Armstrong. Um, well, I hope you, uh, enjoyed it. Goodbye. <laughs> alright, Rick. Come on, I'm saying a bit of cheerful here. It's not that depressing. Why, well, yeah. Sports next. You know how excited you are. Go on. You love the sport, do you? <laughs> New order and here to stay on XFM 104.9. Well, we're here to stay, aren't we, Steve? True enough. Well, for another four weeks anyway, then we're, uh, then we're off. The four right. more shows. They'll have to order a new DJ. Or <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was genius. <laughs> hey, oh, wow. oh I'm Ricky, simple as that. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, and <laughs> oh. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh man, did anyone uh, read the uh, Guardian yesterday? It was Steve's big. We, we were interviewed together. Steve I've never been interviewed before in the paper. I've certainly never had my photo in a national. We were very paper excited. Before. We loved the interview. It was talking about our top ten albums between us. We loved it. We talked really fast, like school kids. We were excited. It was a great interview, and all the way through, it was Ricky Gervais <laughs> with his writing partner. <laughs> Steve Mitchell. <laughs> Stephen Mitchell. It's he not was even gutted. like Mitchell. He phoned me up the night before and he was gutted. No, no, if it is, it's awful. And it was big letters and just all the way through in the caption. And it's just like, oh, God. But it's embarrassing. Do you know what I mean? It's embarrassing because it's like I was trying to get in the paper. I couldn't believe my luck. And then that just draws attention to the fact that I'm not a celebrity <laughs> and consequently they can't even remember my name. Uh, but the worst thing was that, um, uh, one of my favourite albums of all time, I, I said in there, was, um, uh, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. And I said, because, you know, I think one of the most beautiful songs ever is if you see her say, hello. And of course these people were sort of transcribing it from, you know, a dictaphone. It came out, um, my, my favourite song of all time was If You See a Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> if, you see if You See a Sailor. Oh, hello. <laughs> Fruity. Oh, Bob, Dr Bob Drillboids. Uh, <laughs> up on the trap with, uh, where's the sailor gone to? Uh, with Ricky Gervais and Steve LeMichling. <laughs> oh. I don't know, how, they must have thought my name was, was Mitchell all along. They obviously well, never uh, knew. Uh, the evidence is there. <laughs> I, I don't they know why, it was like they, they reported in the paper that we'd be nominated for a Sony, and it said, uh, Ricky Gervais, who hosts the breakfast show on XFM, and it's that sort of, it's just guessing. It's like, uh, uh, presumably someone's gone, does he host a breakfast show? Someone's gone, yeah. And that's, that's their research done. <laughs> yeah. But there was a thing about, um, uh, The Office set in Swindon. That's someone going, I'm just writing an article about The Office. Where's it set? Swindon, I think. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Even <laughs> we research the show now and again, don't we? Yeah. Even we look things up while actually people phone in. Usually yeah. that fella. What's that fella's name that calls in who's not got the website? 
It's, it's got a funny name. Oh. Gilwell <laughs> or something. James. Phone in if you remember uh, uh, what his name is. Yeah. He's James. All... James at Lose Control. Yeah, what's his surname though? Oh, for goodness sake, this is just oh. gonna be interesting to him. Yeah. And his friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember? We better play another record. Yes. Come, oh, I'll tell you what. If Johnny you like Mango. Mango, that's it, yeah. Now, if you like Alvis Costello's Allison, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Freeze, really do. Freeze, um, My Brother Jake. One of my favourites. Stay tuned. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. D d d <laughs> slick it's only things. taken, what is it, five years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you're finally uh, as good as Foxy. Coming up. Yes. That anecdote that Carl didn't get to last week about Neil Armstrong. Oh, <laughs> right. I can't <laughs> wait. It's because he took three links telling us about the horse. Yes, of course. Of the course. horse. Think yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. Um, I went out with Carl on Thursday night. Right. Right. It was one of the most enjoyable nights. I, 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 we just, I, like, went out for about, what, five or six pints, a little crawl, and adventures happened around Carl. Yeah. And just me sitting talking to him was just incredible. I'm thinking that a competition would be win a pint with Carl. Yes. Just, you know, be they hell just of a have good. to go for a pint and they can ask him anything they want. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> he's just great. Um, we met my friend, didn't we? Tell him all about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah. did you enjoy it as much as Ricky, Carl? Um, yeah, there was things I learned as well, like, which was, which was good. Okay. You, you know his mate Robin, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, You'll I'll, discuss that later. I'll tell you later about it. He's got all his near-death experiences to come. Win a pipe, and of course, coming up, um, uh, Carl, so homework was uh, the quotes, and Carl's come up with a great idea to show that anyone can do quotes. He's he's invented a thing like faking it, where he's got two real quotes, right, right and he's made one up. Okay, and he's going to fool us. I I I bet we won't be able to. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, what was the challenge? Look at him looking at us. What's the matter with you? It's just that before you were like, no, this is good for you, but what? now it's turned into a game. <laughs> <laughs> At your expense. Yeah. yeah. Have you only <laughs> just, have you just dawned on you? <laughs> Carl, well, I'm joking. It's great, honestly. It's really good. What was it, the Carl challenge last week? You said it, I thought we did the quotes last week. No, but, um, it, 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 I gave him a, um, ha happiness. One, happiness. It's all about happiness right. and what, the, 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 you know, pursuit of happiness. Mm. And it's in sort of like quote form and everything. But, um, Carl's gonna do a couple of ones and faking it just to show. I mean, cause he's been coming up with fables all week as well now. He comes up with something, he goes, that's a fable, isn't it? <laughs> and he tells me the other, so he's, he's getting good. But now. Go to it all. Should we play another track? Well, have you got something, you got something oh, fresh? I brought in, um, uh, I saw, um, uh, Alvis Costello on Jonathan Ross a couple of weeks ago, and he did just an acoustic version of Alison. And I forgot what an amazing song it is. Mm. And it, it's just, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's, he's the man. Listen, this is a guitar sound. It's so beautiful. My aim is true, to provide quality <laughs> entertainment <laughs> of a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Alvis Costello and his attractions, and Alison on XFM <laughs> 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Mitchell here, yeah. and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Oh. I, I uh, well, though, isn't it? He's going alright, it's going alright. I, um, obviously been doing some acting, as you know, I mentioned it last week, doing this, uh, this sort of comedy pilot. This week, Carl, you're gonna be loving this, I've been doing stunts. <laughs> I swear to God, I've been doing my own stunts with the guy that once made Christopher Reeve fly as Superman, right? And I was doing stunts. I had to do a thing where I, that my character has to, commit, <laughs> has to commit suicide. <laughs> I wonder Don't think we didn't bring that up. <laughs> Were you anywhere near that horse? No? Fine, let's carry on. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, I had to, my uh, character has to commit suicide and he has to sort of, uh, leap off a building. Mm. So the first Don't think shot... that's a, for something for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were up on a roof and, uh, obviously they had the crash mats and stuff and I had to kind of leap off, um, and land on the mats and stuff. And obviously I was petrified the whole time because I was wearing my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> petrified that they might get broken. So I was like not really doing it properly and kind of leaping like, like, what, you know people when they can't dive into a swimming pool and so they put that one foot out first to sort of is break it you, Was it you that told me that, that you, you could never get into fights? No, I could never get into fights or go in a mosh pit because of my glasses. <laughs> I've missed out in life because I can't, I because if, if I was in a fight and I say, come on then, you are, you know, and, and I was in a pub or something, they just have to whiff, whiff off the glasses, <laughs> just knock them off, I'm done for. I, I got, I love nothing. You're really short-sighted, are you? Yeah, but, if, I, but anything's an advantage in a fight, isn't it? And the fact that they're just a blur <laughs> is bound to hamper my otherwise brilliant, you know, ninja skills. Uh, so, yeah. um, so yeah, I've never got into a fight, I've never been in a fight at all, I've never Sorry, it, been in the on, on the wire. So this was making me sort of a bit worried, um, yeah. uh, and anyway, so then I think, well fine, I've done my stunt, and I did it, and everyone clapped, they were pleased with it, and the guy who said I was very good. So then they drive us to the next location, right, I'm thinking I've done my stunts now. There's a crane, I think, what's going on here? Now they need to shoot me 
like, I've already done the stunt where I've sort of f leapt off the building. Now they've got to actually see me falling, right? So I have to get strapped in with this huge belt and they click wires onto me and they hoist me about 30, 40 foot into the air on this wire and I have to- and then they drop me at great speed and I have to scream and shout. You know, it was partly acting. <laughs> <laughs> and, glasses um, on? Glasses- uh, by this time I managed to get some wire fixed to my glasses so they wouldn't come off my head. I assure well, you- they, they were stunt glasses. <laughs> they, they were stunt doing glasses. Their own stunts. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, okay. So, um, so they hoist me into there on this thing. They do a couple of sort of, uh, sort of demo versions, you know, and just to gradually ease me up higher and higher so I kind of become acclimatized to it. And, um, they get, they get me about 30 feet up and they've got these huge crash mats, like those great big ones you always see because stunt people have. And they set up the camera and stuff down below. And I'm, while I'm up in the air dangling there, they remove those crash mats and they replace them with those really thin ones that you always see like, um, teenage gymnasts using on Blue Peter. Do you know what I mean? The really yeah. thin ones they used to have at school, right? And I'm looking down at this and I'm thinking now, they may as well have shouted up, if you fall, you're done for, but we might be able to protect the equipment. Do you know what I mean? It was what, so rubbish. But you weren't gonna land on the floor, presumably. Well, the idea was that the wire would stop that. Oh, I see, but yeah. there was no sa- that, that was their safety. That was the safety net, Why did they not leave the real ones in? Because they- they had to- the, I don't know, for yeah, the shot the and stuff, I they had to- uh, they wow. had to be able to do it. But anyway, what was particularly joyful is one of the other actors pointed this out, right? This is the, um, <laughs> this is the health and safety statement from the stunt guys, right? And they, they obviously have to write up this health and safety statement about how they do it. And it says, We confirm that we have proper safety policies, procedures to comply with the Health and Safety Act 1974, and that we will not do anything which compromises the health safety and welfare of your production crew, actors, or members of the public. If the above situation changes, we'll advise you immediately. <laughs> I mean, if they think that maybe they do want to hurt members of the public. Look at that fat one over there, just try and hit her. Yeah. And bring him down. Don't worry about that one. Don't yeah. worry. She can take it. She can take it. But, uh, so that reassured me, obviously, and, um, now my whole body's racked with pain. Limbs, arms, head, neck. Uh, well, unbelievable. Well, is the shot worth having? I you, mean, you, probably not. You, you wish you, you had- You the cameraman whispered to me, the cameraman whispered to me, he'd probably never use it. Yeah, Steve, you wish you hadn't told that wimpy tale when you hear three, just three, random tales of near-death experiences that Carl told me. Right. Coming up. I mean, honestly. Really? At least you had stunt people and crash mats. Yeah, yeah And you got yeah. paid. Yeah. yeah. The things that he got up to, just through stupidity, <laughs> well. will put you to sh what? Mm. Which what what one of what one of them wasn't through stupidity? Cakes. I'm already excited. The cake one? Yeah. Which one's that? Sorry, you had a near death experience involving Hold a cake. Hold on, I've got three. I've got the I've got the paper mm. round, the the snicking slate, and the the Mr. Freeze. What's the cake one? Yeah, I suppose. Look at the cream cake. Oh yeah. Right, Play now you're record. talking in riddles. Can we have record. these next?